Good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us from, we're thankful to have you join us tonight for what we call Midweek Manna, this chance to pause in the middle of the week and reflect on God's Word together and hope and trust your week is going well to this point. And if you're like us here in the Troy area, um, it's a busy week, of course, it always seems to be busy everywhere, but certainly thankful to uh, have you to pause for a moment and reflect on God's word with us tonight. This week is a week that has on the calendar um, a change of season. September 22nd, usually it's sometimes 21st, and, but usually on the 22nd, which we have this change of, of seasons that takes place. It is, um, and that we call and have what we call the first official day of, of fall. And of course here in the southeast, at least particularly in the Troy area, it's not going to feel like fall. It's, it's going to feel more like summer, at least compared to what it's been feeling as our temperatures are rising back into the mid-90s. But at least on the calendar, it is that, that change of season, that, that time of, uh, of fall, the time we go officially on the calendar from one of the four seasons we have throughout the year to another season. Fall, I know fall is a favorite time of, of many. It is a favorite time of mine, those in our church family and others know I like colder weather in general terms anyway. I'm ready for it to be about 30 to 40 degrees colder uh, in general. So looking forward to that, meaning cold weather is coming. But I do enjoy the fall season. I enjoy the beauty of it. I enjoy the changes of the leaves that take place, the colors of the leaves. And of course, a lot of times leaves falling on the ground is wet as well, but as you start to drive, even as you drive from somewhere simply from Troy to Montgomery, notice the different colors that will start to take place. I, I look forward to that. Fall, of course, also typically is the beginning of a school year. There's always an excitement about the beginning of a new academic year, a new school year that goes along with that, and that's true here on campus as well. Always an excitement of new students coming in and getting ready to experience college for the first time. So that's always fun and exciting. Fall usually means football, of course, and for us, college football we know to be exciting, but also as a baseball fan, it means baseball season's ending, and when the Braves are having a good season, that means playoffs are coming, and we're looking forward to and exciting about that as well. But fall, I think, I especially enjoy because it also means it gets closer to uh, the holiday season, uh, particularly not just uh, different uh, holidays we have throughout the fall, but particularly as we have Thanksgiving and the holiday season, and then what I would call the Christmas season. Obviously, Christmas technically falls just a few days after winter begins, but the season as a whole that nowadays almost takes place at the end of October, starting the first of November, um, that's always an exciting time as well. So fall is a fun season, but fall is like all the rest. It is a, a, one of the seasons we have throughout the year. And I think it's significant to notice the seasons in a lot of different ways. Seasons, of course, do, do mean there are changes that are taking place. Changes that are taking place, obviously, in our physical earth, as I mentioned, the leaves that are taking place and the temperature getting cooler as uh, our part of the hemisphere, at, at least as the earth is rotating, is moving more away from the sun, causing those cooler temperatures. So there's a change that takes place there as well. And then the seasons in some ways from a spiritual perspective also kind of indicate the change of seasons of life we go through. Many of us experience different seasons in life. Some have compared the four seasons a year to the four seasons of life. And I do think there is something to be said of that and that's a fair discussion to be had, but really all of us go through different seasons of life. Um, most of us would consider our tough seasons, we're experiencing tough things, kind of winter months and in spring kind of bringing out of that in summer time of, of great enjoyment, but maybe fall being somewhere between that aspect of it, of a season of maybe not our most difficult days, but a season perhaps just of change and and dealing with change, whether it's change of a job or change of a maybe a new marriage or relationship or preparing for 
a marriage or that change going to college for the first time or parents having empty nests for the first time, that change. The fall kind of signifies a season of change that takes place in so many different lives and perhaps many of you are experiencing that as well. We think about a change of seasons and think about Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Familiar passage to us, but first several verses of Ecclesiastes 3 written in very much poetic form. Solomon says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. All of these thoughts, Solomon, of course, is giving great contrast to saying we need to understand that there is seasons that take place. There are times that these things are going to happen. There are times that aren't going to necessarily be good. At times we have to stay away. At times it maybe will be good. At times to embrace, if you will. And so we have to recognize and understand that as we go through the different seasons of life, that there are changes that are going to take place, changes that we're going to have to deal with. And sometimes those changes may become permanent, may become a new normal, if you will, as we think about marriage, or even as we think about our kids moving away and becoming the adults themselves. But there are certain things about it, though, that aren't going to change or maybe are going to return back to where they were. We think about those who are going through hard times with illnesses or sickness, and hope is, obviously, that doesn't last forever. And we come out of that season, or perhaps there's a season of a difficulty in a job or a, a particular difficulty in marriage that we come out of to enjoy the joys of. We understand things constantly change from that perspective. In some seasons we have to hang on and endure. In some seasons we get to enjoy. But even as, as we recognize and know that this season of fall maybe signifies a season of change in our life, the change of seasons also, though, reminds us that there are some things we know are true that are constant. No matter what the season is, no matter what it is we're dealing with, what it is we're going through. And that's particularly the fact, the fact that change of seasons reminds us and should remind us of God. It reminds us of Him being a powerful God, of Him being the Creator, of knowing that God is indeed the one that created all things, and all things He created were good. And he did create the seasons. He created the fall and the winter and the spring and even the summer. He created day and night. And so the change of seasons should remind us of his power. And with that, the change of seasons should also remind us of his presence, knowing that he is there and he is always there with us. And God is present. He's with us all that we do. One of the great promises that he makes to us is that aspect that wherever we do, wherever we go, that Lord our God is with us. And a change of seasons, I think, reminds us of that. And it also indeed reminds us of really his, his promises and that he is faithful to his promises. There's lots of places we can see this. In Genesis chapter 8, the end of Genesis chapter 8, this is after the flood. This is after the results of the flood. And we see Noah and his family really starting to, to get out from the flood. And it says in the end of Genesis chapter 8, Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. 
And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. When the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I had done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Interesting what God says in here is he really makes a covenant with Noah and makes, makes a, a promise that has continued to this day that even though he got as frustrated as he did to the point he was ready to destroy really everything and everybody and he did that, say Noah and his family with a flood that he makes a covenant that from that point on he no longer is going to destroy the earth by water he also makes a covenant though that he will never strike down every living creature as he has done as long as the earth remains what he has created will be there. What he has set up will be there. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, he may add fall and spring. That's really what seed time and harvest represents. Day and night, they will not cease. And it's a reminder of God being faithful to his promises as well. We get those reminders really every day when the sun rises and the sun sets. We're reminded of God being the creator, of God's presence there, of God's promises. And especially as these change of seasons take place. Which signifies and symbolizes really that the change of seasons we have to deal with even in our life. We can be assured that God is there, that he's still powerful. He's still the most powerful being there he is. He created everything and he is faithful to his promises. So as we do have this first official day of fall this week, even though it may not feel like it outside, let's take a moment and encourage and challenge you to take a moment and just be thankful and praise God for being there, for his power, for his creation, and for that great faithfulness he has in keeping his promises. Well, again, thank you for joining us tonight. We're certainly thankful to have you with us. And we hope and trust the rest of the week goes well for you and is blessed one for you. For those in our church family, we're always thankful to be together this way, this way and look forward to being together again. For those from our community or maybe guests of Collegedale, we'd love to be with you again sometime soon. There may be some that are watching one of our videos for the very first time, and if that's the case, we're certainly thankful to have you join us. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to hear from you have an opportunity to share with you about our church family here at Collegedale. And you can call our church office, you can email us, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, a number of ways to connect with us, for us to connect with you. For all of you, for everybody, we can remind you and encourage you and invite you to join us for our worship this Sunday. We will assemble for Bible classes here at our building at 9 a.m., and we assemble for worship at 10 a.m. We do assemble in our auditorium. We stream it in our fellowship room. And then we do live stream our worship through YouTube as well. So we'd love for you to join us through one of those methods. Again, thank you for joining us. I hope you have a blessed rest of the week. And let's close tonight in prayer. Father, as we do come on this up on this week and this change of seasons that takes place this week, at least as far as the calendar is concerned. It does remind us we have to deal with so many changes in our life, but we're so thankful to know that through those changes that you are still present, you are still powerful, and you still keep your promises. And we thank you so much for that, for the comfort and strength we gain from that, for the assurance we gain from that to help us face any changes of seasons we deal with in our life. Father, we know there are people going through difficult seasons right now because of health issues or recovering from different illnesses or recovering from surgeries. Those that might be battling cancer, those that are still dealing with COVID or after effects of COVID, those that have lost loved ones. All of those situations, Father, we live to you. Pray that they will be comforted by your presence and strengthened by your presence. 
and that us as your people can have ears and eyes open for ways we can help encourage and serve this group of people as well. Father, we know there are people going through difficult days and throughout this country and throughout this world, those recovering from floods and other natural disaster situations still, some of those months from now removed that may not get the media coverage or attention, but know those people still go through hard times. We know there's still a situation in Ukraine, know there's been some changes with that. We do pray for peace with that. We think about even the people in Great Britain that are dealing with the change of, in their monarch and that all that goes with that. And we pray for all those situations. We pray you watch over them. And Father, as always, we pray that you'll be with the leaders of our community and our state and our nation and even our world. They allow their hearts and minds to be guided by you in a way that they'll make decisions decisions that will allow us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have an opportunity to share the others good news about your son Jesus. And it's in your, in your son's name that we pray. Amen.